Welcome designers to this 4x4 in schools sketch tutorial and here we're going to show you how to create the basic starting point for any 4x4 in schools vehicle and we're going to use the ISO sketch tool and just using the measurements on that screen there um, drawing some 40mm lines or some 4cm lines to get us started and um, this is a process called crating um, and crating is really where we draw crates or boxes to give us a framework to start from so in this case a crate or a box which is the size or dimensions roughly of a 4x4 in school's car. So by doing this, we're giving ourselves an area to work inside that we can then create our sketch from and know that it's roughly the right proportions or the right shape to fit in with the regulations and the rules of the challenge. So here you've, just, you've seen, we've just used the ISO sketch tool to draw nearly what looks like a cube, but then at the last second, instead of turning it into that cube, we are extending the lines to 70 centimeters, 70 millimeters rather on one side so 7 centimeters, 70 millimeters so we're creating a rectangular prism uh, like a cuboid, stuck to a cuboid um, a stretched out box, think of it as a shoe box so we're just using the ISO sketch tool and using all of the advantages there of having an isometric stencil ready to hand Okay, next stage then is to mark out some wheels, and you can see where we're going to put them. We're going to use the middle stencil on ISO Sketch, and you can have a look around the outside of the tool. There is um, a framework or a little crosshair, if you like, around the ellipse tool, and that matches up with the drawing you've got. We're going to mark a, a space between the wheels of 40 millimeters first, though. So, looking on the ruler and just working out roughly where you want the wheels to be, marking two dots 40 millimeters apart. Four centimeters apart. We're then going to line the middle of the the tool up there, the middle of the the crosshairs on our ellipse tool, just so it matches up and so that the line is sitting on the bottom of your sketch. It'll it'll make sense when you've got the tool on the paper, but we're just going to draw two little circles, and they are in the perfect isometric view. So the next thing we're going to do here is just to to mark on the bottom edge of our vehicle body. Now I've marked up five millimeters and then I've used the ISO sketch tool just to draw a line across the shape I'm uh, using a little cheeky shortcut there really this this is up to you if you want your vehicle to sit really high off the ground then measure further up the shape and measure maybe a whole centimeter or two centimeters even but you can see what we're doing here we're just drawing a line which is parallel to the crate that we started off with that just shows us where the bottom of our vehicle is um, here I'm just marking up another couple of lines another couple of dots so t so another centimeter up I'm going to draw another line in here um, and then start to create a little windscreen, a bit of a, an angled front to the car. Just using ISO sketch again here, just to do a little cheeky ISO sketch shortcut. Stop us having to guess where the angle has to be for that line. And then it's just a case of joining up these dots. So you can see point to point there and I'm actually going to use the, the little stopper on the end of the ruler here to make it super easy. Uh, make sure I don't go too far on the ruler so you can see what I'm doing there. Now you can see a car starting to emerge, and you're probably thinking at this stage, ah, hang on a minute, this is looking a bit like a bread van. Don't, don't worry, don't panic. You're going to have to bear with me in this, and believe me, this is going to look cool. So we're going to do the same treatments at the back now, just mark on um, a line across the back where the, the back of the car is going to be, the, the back of the, the body, the swooping body that I'm going to create. Um, honestly, you guys can do this any way you want, and you can, you can choose to put any sorts of shapes, styles, lines, curves, good way to start off touring cars is probably just start off in the side view and just create the view that you want to see from the side and then try and convert that into a 3D sketch like this. So here really I'm just starting to put some basic lines on, you can see the real rough shape of my car and now it's time to get creative. So here we're just going to start employing a bit of freehand and I'm, I'm going to look to to round off the, a little bit of the front of the car first. Think about this as, a, as an aerodynamic shape as well as just a, a thing to look at. This has got to be kind of efficient through the air. If this is going to be a, a 4x4 car, a Land Rover of the future, it, it can't be rubbish on road. It's got, it's, it can't, get, can't gulp down fuel or electricity or whatever we're feeding cars. It has to be slick and efficient. So just rounding off some edges. And all I'm doing here is working with the straight lines that I've drawn on with the ruler and just starting to give a little bit of a softness to them. Using a pencil, you can use a, a fine liner if you want. I like to use pencil, then, then you can kind of keep going over things and, and, and rub out things if you get them wrong. Now then, adding a few little cheeky details here. And you can see where we're going with this car. This is, this is going to look cool. This has got some, some slightly flared features. A little grill at the front. I've gone for a mega wing at the back. Now I'm going to start putting some marker pen on it. And this is, this is sped up now, just so that you can 
kind of get a, a quick idea of what I'm doing. If you guys can, get a hold of some... These are alcohol markers. These are uh, proper professional rendering markers, but you can use them in schools. Um, they they cost a couple of quid each, but they are absolutely brilliant. You see, what, what you'll notice here is that it almost looks like the ink's blended into itself. Um, you don't get those streak marks that you get so much with regular water-based markers that you, that you use in school. So the effect you get is really smooth and kind of super professional without you really having to do much. So we're just starting to add a bit of colour now and I've, I've gone with green, Land Rover green, uh, and just starting to build it up in the areas that you can see the bodywork. So I'm leaving the window a bit clear, the top, I'm going to call that top bit a panoramic roof. Uh, I'm just going to put a bit of green on it. You can see where the grey makes a difference now, where you've got a bit of dark grey underneath the green. It brings out the shadow. Um, just another little nice trick. If you've got a couple of grey marker pens in school, you can use two shades of grey. Uh, I'm sure that's a Billy Joel song. Two shades of grey, um, and just any colour over the top of them, you'll get a nice graduated effect. Um, so here we are, just putting a few finishing touches with fine liner, um, a little bit of yellow to pick out the headlights there. This is starting to look pretty cool. See what I told you? I told you it was going to look good. And then picking out the wheels and the tyres, and just starting to give a bit of bit of a contrast now. So. Whatever you do with marker pens, whatever you do with colour, it's all about contrast. It's all about showing different areas as different angles, different surfaces. If you, everything's covered in, coloured in the same colour and the same shade, then the drawing tends to look very flat and you don't really understand the 3D-ness of the shape. It doesn't look very realistic either, so you can see here with all the sort of different angles and surfaces and, and shadows, the shape looks a bit more convincing, it looks a bit more real somehow. So all those 3D features that you've drawn, that you will draw as well, you've kind of made the most of them by adding a bit of real life shadow. So just a couple of finishing touches now, adding a bit of detail to the wheels, and then we'll give it a little bit more contrast with some underbody shadow and some go faster swooshes. And there it is, our Land Rover of the future. <laughs> 